Functions are subprograms that we'll write inside of larger programs, and they allow us to break down our code into smaller pieces. They also allow us to reuse code. So if we define a function that carries out one task, we can make use of that task from multiple different points in our program without having to reinvent the wheel each time. Let's think about functions in an intuitive sense in terms of how you might build a house. So what are the steps to building a house? Well, you need to prepare your site, you need to lay a foundation, put up the framing, which is the wood behind the walls, you need to install the windows and doors, put up the roofing, siding. There's a whole sequence of steps that goes into building a house. But these steps are actually at a pretty high level, right? What does it mean to frame a house? We're going to jump to the instructions that are specific for framing a house. And we might pre-build some sections in eight foot spans, stand them up and follow some sequence of steps beyond that. When we've completed all of the sub steps for framing, we might jump right back to where we were in the overall instructions for building a house and move on to installing windows and doors. And that's also gonna have its own set of steps. This idea that we can take a process and specify it at a high level and know that each of those steps at a high level is gonna have more specific steps specified somewhere else and that we can follow those steps in a logical way is intuitively how functions work. A function definition is a subprogram, and it's going to follow that same pattern we've been talking about this whole course, where we're gonna have some inputs, those inputs are going to lead to some series of steps, and ultimately it's gonna result in some value. So a function definition follows this pattern, but it's gonna have some specific names for each of those components. The first is the idea of a parameter, and this is a placeholder for input. A parameter saying, hey, I'm gonna need a number, or hey, I'm gonna need two numbers in order for this function to do its job. The function body is the algorithm or the sequence of steps. These are just statements like we've been writing in this course. Finally, a function is going to reach a return statement that is going to say this is the output of this function when it's done its job. Defining a function and the function definition is a lot like writing down a recipe. We're not actually cooking anything or baking anything. We're just laying out the sequence of steps that will happen when we want to cook or bake something. And later, we're going to actually follow through on those steps. So how do we call a function? The processor is going to reach a function call and that function call is gonna have some arguments. This is just a fancy word for the actual values we're gonna to give to the function as its inputs. So when we go to jump into the function definition or jump over to our subprogram, those arguments are going to become the parameters in the function definition. So whatever actual values we're sending to the function, those become the parameters. And we'll talk all about that process in a future lesson. The function definition is then gonna step through each of its instructions, top to bottom, and ultimately the function is going to result in a return statement, or a returned value. This is the output of the function, and where that function call previously occurred in our high-level set of steps, it's going to be replaced with the returned value, and the program will continue on from that point. To play around with these ideas, let's go ahead and jump into VS Code. So if you'll get this example set up, we'll talk through what's going on with this function definition and this function call, in just a minute. So let's try running this program. We're asked for a number value to assign to A, maybe we'll give it a value of four, and a number to assign to B, we'll give it a number of six, and we see that between four and six, six is greater. This isn't the most exciting of programs, but that's intentional. We wanna make the illustration of function definitions and function calls as easy to follow as possible. So when this program began, we set up two variables in our main function. Notice we're starting in main, and a was assigned a value of four. The next thing that happened in our program was we asked for B and B was assigned an initial value of six. And then we declared this third variable answer and answer is being assigned the result of something we haven't seen before, a function call to a function named max. And we are giving it arguments or inputs A and B. Well, what is A? A is going to be four and B is going to be six. So what does it mean to call a function? Well, this is like following a recipe. What's gonna happen is we're gonna put a bookmark right here. We're gonna say, we're gonna come right back to this point and we're going to jump to the definition of this function, which is down here. And you'll notice that the definition of this function has a number of pieces to it. We'll explain each of these in the next set of slides. But for now, just to follow along, what we're gonna say is four is being assigned to this X parameter and six is being assigned to this y parameter. So now we're ready to jump into this max function and we start here. We say if x, which is four, is greater than y, which is six, that is false. So we're not going to return x, 
we're going to return y. Well, what's y's value? y's value is six. So we're gonna take that six and return it or use this as the result of this function call. And so we go back to our bookmark and we say max of four and six evaluates to a value of six. That six value is then assigned to the answer variable. And when we get to the next line of our code, answer is six and six is greater is printed out. So in this simple example, the main function is gathering two numbers and finding the maximum of those two numbers. But the actual steps for finding the maximum of those two numbers are contained in the subprogram or the function max. Once we've written this function max, we don't have to rewrite it. We can call max from main or from other places in our program without having to think through what are the actual steps you need to take in order to find the larger of two numbers. This seems a little bit silly because this function is so simple, but you can imagine more complex functions that allow us to think about our programs at higher and higher levels. Just like in the example where we were building a house and we could think about the steps at a very high level, that's what's happening here in main. But each of those steps actually has some subroutines that are a part of it, and that's what we're looking at when we look at the max function implementation. Now that we've seen a function definition and a function call, let's put some terminology on each of these components that we're looking at. The pattern we'll use to define a function follows the following syntax. First, when we define functions, we'll do so outside of the main function, and we'll typically write these function definitions after the main function. Although this isn't a hard rule, you could place them before the main function if you want it. The intuition for doing them after the main function is main is going to specify the high level sequence of steps our program is going to follow. And then these function definitions are the subprograms. Like variables, functions are going to have names and the naming rules of variables apply to functions as well. The parameters of a function are specified in that first set of parentheses and these are just special variable declarations. Parameters are placeholders for the inputs a function needs. This is followed by a colon and the return type of a function. The return type is just the data type that the function is going to give back when it is called. Finally, we have an arrow, which is an equal symbol, followed by a greater than symbol, and a block of code that is the function's body. The function's body is not going to run until this function is called. So let's take a look at these components in the function we just wrote, named max. The name of the function is max. It has two parameters, x and y. They're both numbers, so in order to use max, you have to give max two numbers. Inside of max, those numbers will be referred to as x and y. When you call max, it's gonna give you back a number. And specifically, we know that max is gonna give you back the greater of the two numbers you give it as inputs. The body of this function is just an if then else statement. And when we reach the then and the else blocks, we see that there's a special kind of statement, a return statement, which we'll talk about in a future lesson, which says give back to the caller of this function this particular value. To call a function, there's also a specific syntax. It's the name of the function, followed by some parentheses, and then the arguments that you're trying to give that function as inputs. In our example, we called max directly with input a and b, or arguments a and b. When a function call is encountered, the processor is going to drop a bookmark at this point, and it's going to return back here. But we need to go visit the subprogram of this function definition. The function's data type is specified by the function's return type. So max, the function definition, said that it would return us a number. And so we can use the max function call anywhere we can use a number. For example, if we declared answer to be a variable of type number, we could assign the result of max to answer. We'll talk all about return types and the return statement in a future lesson. The key thing to know is that when a processor reaches a function call, it's going to follow a set of rules to jump over to the function call with some inputs and return back with a result. And we're gonna be looking at those rules in much more depth in the lessons ahead. Functions are the fundamental unit we have for process abstraction in our programs. When you go to write a function, you're gonna spend a lot of time writing the initial set of steps to make that function correct. But once you've done so, you can reuse that function later and not have to worry about those individual steps. Additionally, functions give us a way of breaking down our programs that will allow us to specify our program's functionality at a high level and then the details of it separately in subprograms. They also give us the ability to reuse code without having to reinvent the wheel every time. So functions allow us to avoid repetitive and redundant code.